move into the search market came from a place I hadn't really expected, from Meta. Meta's AI chatbot, which is available on Instagram, WhatsApp and Messenger, is similar to ChatGPT, answering questions in a conversational style or generating images in real time. Until now, this chatbot relied on Google and Microsoft Bing search results, which made it vulnerable since these companies are somewhat competitors. For this reason, Meta decided to develop its own search engine. They say a wise person learns from the mistakes of others and Meta, learning from lawsuits against Perplexity AI and ChatGPT, signed an agreement with Reuters. This agreement allows them to provide users with real-time, reliable news in response to their queries. This is advantageous for Meta because users stay within the application rather than leaving for Google in cases where they would have originally used Google. This development is exciting, but could it potentially threaten Google's long-term dominance in search? We can talk about a trend here, as ChatGPT has also recently introduced the search function. OpenAI also has its own web crawlers, GPTBot and OAI SearchBot. GPT-Bot gathers data to train the LLM models like GPT-40, for example, while OAI SearchBot indexes web content to enhance SearchGPT's search capabilities. OpenAI still relies mainly on third-party search engines, mostly Bing. They also have partnerships with news providers. However, they don't rely fully on external sources as Meta does. In ChatGPT, similar to Perplexity, sources are cited within the summary of search results, and you can check a complete list of sources at the end. It shows what was quoted in one section, and all searches used in another. This feature was first introduced to ChatGPT Plus and team users, followed by enterprise and education users in the following weeks and will be available to free users in the coming months. This would be a big leap for free users as they wouldn't be restricted to pre-2023 data. A major advantage of ChatGPT and all AI-supported searches is that they are much more user-friendly than Google's ad-heavy search. Lately, I've come across several videos criticizing the quality of Google search. In contrast, Sam Altman said he doesn't want ads in ChatGPT's search results. I will disclose, just as like a personal bias, that I hate ads. Um, I, think, I think ads were important to, get, to give the early internet a business model, but I think they, they do sort of somewhat fundamentally misalign a user's incentives with the company providing the service. Um, I'm not totally against them. I'm not saying OpenAI would never consider ads, but I don't like them in general. And I think that uh, ads plus AI is sort of uniquely unsettling to me. You know, when I, when I think of like GPT writing me a response, if I had to go figure out, you know, exactly how much was who paying here to influence what I'm being shown, I don't think I would like that. And as like things go on, I think I would like that even less. Another big advantage over a traditional Google search is the conversational format. You can request a draft for a post on X, data tables, or any kind of further analysis based on the search results. At the same time as the ChatGPT search release, OpenAI also introduced a Chrome plugin. This makes ChatGPT the default search engine in Chrome instead of Google. ChatGPT search is better at giving clear answers to regular offline questions, but it's still not always perfect. Its ability to provide accurate information is especially critical, as it was released just days before the US elections. When we look closer, it's not Google that competes directly with ChatGPT search, it's Perplexity AI. It seems that the future trend will involve AI-assisted searches, which is why OpenAI also decided to accelerate its efforts. Currently, Perplexity is the king of AI-assisted search. Its investors include Jeff Bezos, NVIDIA, MetaAI head Jan LeCun, and ex-OpenAI founder Andre Karpati. Even Perplexity's free version offers a lot. Users can perform five pro mode queries daily, allowing more detailed in-depth research. With a pro subscription, 300 pro searches are available and users can choose which LLM model they want to use. Perplexity also has its own crawler bot called Perplexity Bot. Despite the rise of these new AI-based searches, Google doesn't have to worry about its throne just yet. 
it holds roughly a 90% market share in search, with the closest competitor at a modest 4%. Google's share is 22.5 times that of the second place. However, data suggests that DuckDuckGo's market share should begin to feel some pressure, with DuckDuckGo handling around 100 million searches daily, while Perplexity processes the same volume weekly. Given that DuckDuckGo achieved this since its founding in 2008 and Perplexity since 2022, it might soon catch up. So for now, it's not Google that seems at risk, but DuckDuckGo. By the time market share becomes significant enough to threaten Google, they might have perfected their own AI-assisted search. Genmo's new video generation model, Mochi One, has made its debut recently. Its unique advantage is being open source, and it seems to offer higher quality than any previous open source models. In fact, its quality rivals commercially available models like Runway or Kling. Its strengths include accurate prompt following. It can generate 5.4 second videos at 480p resolution at 30 frames per second. They plan to launch the full version before the end of the year, capable of HD, which means 720p resolution. However, we won't be creating our feature-length movies on our laptops with mochi-generated shots anytime soon. This is because the inference requires four H100 GPUs, each costing around 40,000 US dollars. Their GitHub page notes that they welcome community contributions to help reduce this massive hardware requirement. The software comes under an Apache 2.0 license, which means it allows free use and modification of the software. The release also includes a website where you can generate two videos per day with one account. Let's try it out to see a koala eating a hamburger and here's what I got. The first result is a nice, calm scene of good quality, though the fingers look a bit weird and blend into the hamburger, and one of the leaves sometimes seems to be in front of the ear and sometimes behind it. But overall, the generation is of good quality. The second one has more of a Pixar style. Interestingly, after some kind of a punch zoom, we suddenly found the cola on another branch. In the third one, the hamburger doesn't quite look like a hamburger anymore. Besides being a bit blurry due to the 480p resolution, the entire shot looks quite realistic. We can also check community-generated videos. There's a one that shows an excellent physics simulation for pouring liquid. Here, in the living room, the camera moves straight towards a cat, with not much action happening, but nothing notably wrong except perhaps the slightly strange looking furniture. Here's a resting or sleeping dog with wind blowing the dust. It closes its eyes slightly and it's very simple and looks beautiful. The dust floating in the air looks quite realistic. Here's one when a deer befriends a lion. It's of excellent quality, although the ear moves oddly, bouncing back and forth, but overall it's quite lifelike. Here's a giant cat among children. These AI-generated giants seem to be a popular topic lately. Here's an eagle with a small rabbit. Not much movement, but what's happening is very realistic. The caustics and water reflections are great in the pool scene with the woman. The wind blowing her hair and the people walking in the background are good. It's also nice that her face doesn't change or become a different person during the video. This poor dog's head in this scene is severely distorted, I hope he's okay. Maybe he's just going to turn into a werewolf. This one is also quite good, with the camera spinning around the couple. Their faces remain consistent, and there's nothing that would quickly give away it's an AI video. Then here's the hamburger, or rather a cheeseburger now, as cheese is being placed on it. I don't think I would have guessed this is an AI video, and it's even more impressive for an open source model. I remember Sora's first demo in February. It was the first AI in a long time that really made my jaw drop. 
And here we are now, only 8 months later, with AI generated videos from open source tools that I can barely tell apart from real human recorded videos. I wonder if in 2 years we'll be able to generate videos of this quality on a standard consumer level PC. The duck jumping forward in the water is nearly flawless, it moves well, the water physics work nicely and the dog's motion is highly realistic. The way its ears flap matches reality perfectly, as does the movement of its tail with the effects of gravity and water splashes, all very well done. This is quite a cinematic scene featuring a woman in a red dress, it's very convincing overall. The background characters however remain quite still, especially toward the end. Here you can see two top models blowing smoke. One of them doesn't blow out the smoke, only the other, but the physics of the smoke is great. And nothing morphs really in this scene. Based on this example, the model particularly excels at generating cartoon-like videos. I'm impressed. The background blur is well done and the video is completely usable. Recently a new, mysterious image generator called Red Panda emerged. It scored higher than anyone else on the Artificial Analysis benchmark. Later it was revealed that the mysterious model was Recraft's V3 model. The model is set to excel in text generation, anatomy, prompt following and aesthetic quality. A seemingly useful extra feature is that it can also generate vector format images. Let's quickly test prompt following. This was my prompt. This won't be an in-depth test, we'll just try it quickly. It's also a bit unfair as in Ideogram we can generate 4 images while Recraft can only generate 2. First let's look at the examples from Ideogram. In the first one, the mouse is not standing with its back to us, nor is it on a podium. The instruments are correct, we have the violin, flute, cello and a mini piano, but the animals aren't arranged as described. In the second one there's already a small crowd, there are three flutists and one has decided to play both flute and cello. There's no piano, but there's a cello and violin and the mouse faces us. In the third there are four of them and the mouse is standing with its back to us. There's a cello, violin, flute and mini piano. One flutist also decided to play the cello, however their arrangement still isn't correct. In the fourth, the mouse stands with its back to us and there's a cello, violin and mini piano, although the cat uses the piano backward. The flute is missing and the arrangement is still incorrect. Let's see what the Recraft V3 model can do. In the first version, the number of cats has drastically decreased. There's no mouse, but there are two people. The cats aren't really playing instruments. One balances something like a stick. One person plays the violin and another maybe plays a double bass. One person's face looks quite strange. Ouch, this is nightmare fuel for sure. At least the fingers look decent. One cat's face is also pretty AI horror. The second one is much better. Here it interpreted the semicircle as standing on something circular. The mouse is still missing. One cat plays the violin. There's also a person and it looks like they stuck the bow perpendicularly into the violin's body. I think Ideogram won this round. Now let's try text generation. Let's see the images generated by Ideogram. Well, it really struggled with the text here. You can tell it tried, but it's not really good. The second image might be slightly better, but it's still full of errors. The third one may have the entire text visible without errors, though it's a bit distorted and wavy. The fourth one is almost correct, but there are distorted letters and in the word tool it looks like there are three L's. Let's see what the Recraft V3 model created. This is much better, the text is flawless, the letters look good. In AI the eye looks a bit like an exclamation mark, but this is a completely good text generation. The second one is also perfect. I think Recraft V3 won this round. 
Got the search game hot from the apps you scroll daily. Messenger, Insta, WhatsApp a lot. No more riding on beam, they building their own. Learning lessons from the lawsuits, now they're set on the throne. Real time news from readers, keeping folks in the app. While Google's watching close, feeling that heat in their lap. Chat GPT's in 